All right, we now turn to the NUP lawyer, George Musisi, to understand the implications of the presidential pardon to the 19 party supporters. Uh, good evening to you, Council, and thank you for joining us. Would like to pick your mind or, on the presidential pardon. Well, um, we are happy that uh, as a result of that pardon, our colleagues, our brothers and sisters have got their freedom. Uh, we are only disgruntled that they had to get their freedom after uh, pleading guilty to what we think are sham charges, what we think are politically inspired charges, uh, because this is the same government which kept uh, Olivian group in, in communicado detention for the month before being produced in court, mm. which kept them for two years without bringing a single witness, then brought up a more serious charge, mm. which uh, denied the attempt to get freedom, temporary freedom on bail, and then which, uh, uh, they, in her own words, she has said, told them that you have to first accept before you go out, despite the evidence. So they didn't plead guilty as a result of the overwhelming evidence, but as a result of, uh, because they, that was the only way out. So we are only dissatisfied that they should have been unconditionally released, but uh, be that as may, we are happy that at least they have got their partial freedom. Mm. Mm. Okay, and so you have argued that it is wrong you know, yes. to prosecute civilians in the military courts and the constitutional court made a pronouncement on the matter as well mm. uh, by determining that it's, it is wrong. Mm. But now the Attorney General appealed that uh, the Supreme Court is yet to pronounce itself on the matter. Mm. So what is the implication of such a development to the civil and political rights? Of course, because the army has increasingly used the court to settle uh, that particular court to settle even sometimes political inspired charges, like even you saw this week, uh, this has been used as a tool for repression increasingly. Uh, and uh, when the uh, Attorney General appealed and the Supreme Court was granting a stay, it, the Supreme Court itself had undertaken to ensure that uh, this matter is expeditiously handled. Okay. And of course, we know that some judges has, have died, but it has since been impaneled and it has since been reconstituted. We thought that this is one of those cases that should have been expeditiously handled and determined because they pertain freedoms of Ugandans. Just imagine if tomorrow the Supreme Court came out with a judgment affirming what the lower court said, that indeed civilian uh, uh, trials in army court marshals are unconstitutional and illegal. What is going to happen to even the Olivia and the group who are already having a conviction on their necks, mm. or people who have served sentences, or people who are still on remand? How are we going to compensate for their freedoms? So we, yet we have a, a constitutional court judgment which ruled on two of them almost two years ago that this trial is unconstitutional. So we think that uh, all our eyes are on the Supreme Court because uh, as for the government, it will continue for even the reasons that the constitutional court found. Uh, there cannot be a lot of justice and fairness by the very setup, irrespective of the people supporting them. By the very setup, by the law setting up those those courts, you, uh, pass, uh, the principles of fair hearing mm. cannot be en enhanced. Okay. Mm. So now, uh, Olivia Lutai, one of those who was uh, pardoned, mm. you know, told the journalists at the NUP headquarters mm. that she is kept re-arrest by a whisker. Mm. Um, how are these supporters safe even after? Uh, how how is their safety guaranteed? even after being pardoned? Of course, uh, nothing can be guaranteed, uh, just as we know, even for people who are not being in custody. Uh, the issue is that hmm. uh, government, which is supposed to guarantee their freedom, uh, sometimes stands the violator. Uh, and sometimes even does it outside the law. So we can only, uh, we can't say with certainty mm. that anyone's safety is guaranteed. We can only hope, we can only pray, we can only ask them that they at least, these people have already gone through enough, they have lost livelihoods. Let them give them that passion to enjoy some of the civil liberties that they enjoy to, 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 to uh, celebrate under the constitution. Yes, mm -hmm. and you have talked about them losing, you know, their livelihoods. Are mm -hmm. there any plans to, you know, pursue compensation or redress for the time that they have spent while in, in detention? Uh, the main reason why government was pushing them towards a guilty plea was to avoid exactly that, because they know that under the laws you can bring up a suit for malicious prosecution. Uh, so they were pushing them towards that, such that you walk out on our terms with the people who kept you captive who refused to, to, to uh, give, guarantee a fair trial, but then the, uh, it's meant to uh, stop them from bringing up an action for malicious prosecution by saying, in any case, you plead the guilty to the charges. So that is one of the reasons. But we can only hope that uh, the constitutionality of these pleas 
uh, can be in, in, uh, investigated by the constitutional court upon a fresh petition, and then if they are lifted, then maybe in future they can seek civil remedies in courts. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, counsel, finally, um, what measures do you think need to be put in place to prevent, you know, similar cases from happening? Of course, the first thing, the, 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 the principal measure is for government to respect the constitution, to respect the constitutional court orders, to respect the right to a fair hearing. If they trust civil courts or courts of judicature to try a rebel leader, why about a person who was allegedly found with a bullet or with a beret or a t-shirt? So let people uh, be entrusted in the institution which was given under the constitution to administer justice. That is the judiciary. Okay. That is the first point that they can at least... Uh, in the very minimum, to respect their rights. Okay. Mm. And finally, your closing remarks on uh, the pardon from the president. We can only hope that all politically inspired uh, remand uh, prisoners who are still, because there are nine others on that same file who are still in custody, can be unconditionally released. And then there should be a bar to further uh, politically inspired uh, political dissent Civil political dissent should never be resolved by persecutions, but by political contestations. Okay. Well, thank you, Cass.